I am uh, Joel Duffin, as was mentioned, and I am the CEO of OER Blue. And my co-founder here is Justin Ball, and he and I started working together about four and a half years ago at the Center for Open Sustainable Learning at, at Utah State University. And there we were focused on this issue of how can you facilitate finding, adapting, using, and assessing or tracking how these re open education resources are used. And it's interesting, in the previous presentation, this room open studies implemented an integration with MIT where they provide online learning supports for the MIT uh, open courseware. Well, at, at Causal, a similar effort was attempted, but what happened is after a, a, a tool was developed, there was no adoption from MIT, which, you know, they protect the brand and so on. But the question becomes, well, what if we wanted to provide this, but MIT is not going to integrate our tool? Um, so that became a question, is how can you facilitate the use of these resources that you may not own or control, even though they're open license? And secondly, open content's great, but how do you actually teach it? Well, typically you put it inside an LMS and then you start using it there because you've got your other learning support. And so, and then I think this definition is of an LMS, of what is an LMS, what do we really need, is, is, has been in transition. So all these questions come, come into play, but OER Glue came out of a lot of this work. So, um, I guess just mentioning that title, pervasively mashing up the web. So a lot of what we saw and some of the effort we've done before is we're, we're kind of doing mashup, but can we really do it in a big way in, to adapt resources for reuse? So, just mentioning briefly, we've got some great advisors that, we're, that are guiding us. Uh, we've, a year ago, we received a grant from the National Science Foundation Small Business Innovative Research Program to develop OER Blue. And uh, David Wiley, Cable Green, Phoenix Wang, some of these uh, people are, are helping us to understand and guide what our, our work. Some of the previous projects we worked on, as I mentioned at Causal, focused around picking these smaller problems out and tr trying to take an approach of small pieces loosely joined. So we built a tool called Send a Wiki that let you take any web page and send it to MediaWiki where now you could edit it. Another one called Make a Path, which let you create a pathway through web pages and annotate them so that you could use them as part of as a presentation or a discussion or a learning path. Another one called OCW Finder, which Wiley uh, developed initially, which let you a, a quick way to find open courseware related to what you're interested into. Olaz Moser is a, was an identity feed aggregator early on and, a, and a, a social network platform. And so we were build, building all these tools and then eventually we left Causal and worked for Teachers Without Borders, did some consulting with them. And we were building basically a platform to help all their teachers all over the world. But the challenge that we ran into there is every time the founder saw a new tool, he said, well, can't we do that? Can't we do that? YouTube does video, can't we do that? And so, of course, it's impossible to keep up with all the cool tools. And then, why would you want to, right? There's a good tool out there, use it. And so this kind of helped formulate the ideas and sow the seeds for, for OER Blue. So some of the problems that we try and address are some of the problems with commercial content. That content is often too expensive, hard to modify, quickly out of date, and contains limited feedback loops. So I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, so Creative Commons to the rescue, right? Uh, the ability to explicitly grant the right for anyone to use and adapt, the, potentially adapt the resources that I'm putting out there. And to me, the, one of the key innovations of Creative Commons is that it reduces the barrier, reduces the friction required to adapt and reuse the material. If I can put something out there, but every anytime someone wants to use it, they have to come and ask me for permission, maybe I'm not going to enter into that kind of venture. So the chances of something reusing that's open licensed are obviously much higher than something that's not. So open content has come on in a big way. Again, I'm preaching to the choir. The foundations have supported this development and dissemination. 
Uh, we've got these communities, Wikipedia, Flickr, where tons of people are creating freely this content which can be used for learning. And so there's, there's this big movement. But even with all the con open content that's out there, it's still very hard to, for an organization to adopt and adapt that for their purposes. In fact, I think that's, you know, that's a real interesting, there's, you know, starting to develop case studies of where, where are there successful stories of this? Because a lot of our effort, obviously, has been focused in, can we create and license this content and make it accessible and searchable? Well, who's going to actually reuse all this? And how is it, what's this process going to look like? So there's a lot of good content out there, and not only content, but there's a lot of good tools, as I mentioned before. Someone comes up with a new cool tool every day. Why should we re-implement that? So how do we create effective learning experiences that utilize and leverage all this open content and the good tools that are out there? That's the problem that we're trying to solve. And so OER Glue is a, is a mashup learning platform, or a, a mashup platform for online learning that has four components to it. One, discover. We have search and recommendation tools to help you find good open license content on the internet from our databases as well as from any sites and sources that you want to point us at. Then we have drag and drop mashup tools that let you go to any web page and start dragging content out of it. Images, video, interactive tools, content, and then drag that same content into any other web page. Additionally, you can drag interactive widgets, such as if you, if you wanted to use a CNN article in your, in your class you were teaching, you could take and drag a discussion specific to your class directly into that article, where it is, put in a quiz, and I'll demonstrate something of this. So the, the ability to do that mash <coughs> you can then quickly deploy it to your learners inside of your LMS or in, using our platform alone, and then track what they're doing. So this is unique in that we can track what learners are doing on other people's websites. So you don't have to have own the content to be able to embed the analytics. Because of how we're designed, if you're using content that's spread around the web, we can tell you who's going there, what they're doing, how long they're spending. So this describes this discover, assemble, deploy, and track that makes up our platform. And there's two key strategies that we use that were kind of some of this previous work I mentioned. Uh, suggested to us. One, use content where it is, rather than requiring it to be copied into a new system. And second, integrate with everyone. Instead of re-implementing tools, good tools that are out there and the new ones that are going to come along, we just want to make it easy to integrate with, with everyone. So these, these are the strategies that we follow. And what we've done so far is built a, one, one of the ways we've bootstrapped content is we've gone out to the open courseware and in using automated tools, slurp them and created enhancements to them that we can in an automated way. This serves as a basis that an organization can go and take one of these courses and immediately begin adapting it and in adding interactivity to it and doing, th doing things with it. So, how does it work? Well, this is just a little bit about the mashup idea, which I'm assuming you're all familiar with. But a few years ago, there, when Google Maps came on the scene, people asked, what would happen if we took the maps and combine them with the county property records. And they came up with this company called Zill, which was, of course, very successful again. So this idea of mashing up, being able to see, OK, there's some cool content. Here's some good data. Can we bring them together in a unified context to support learning? Of course, you know, this was for property. Now we're talking about learning. Can we take blog articles? Can we take, can we take data? Can we bring it together and create a, a support a learning experience? So. <clears throat> That screen that did show, I'll, I'll demonstrate. The way that we, the technology that we've implemented to support this is first a browser extension. So by using a browser extension, you get a toolbar that's present wherever you're going, which allows you to do this authoring and then delivery. As we've gone out and worked with large scale organizations, as you can imagine, none of them are anxious to, imp, uh, to install an extension across the organization. And so we're now in the process of refining the ability to author these mashups through a proxy, which we already can deliver the mashups through our proxy, uh, and I'll demonstrate that in a bit. But some of the functionality, as I mentioned, here it shows someone going to an MIT website that has a video of this physics lecture, dragging that, collecting that video out of the page, dragging it into another page where you want it. Here at Khan Academy video, I want, a, I want a discussion specific to my class. 
Is that my signal? Or that someone's <laughs> <going on? laughs> Guilty. Um, inserting a discussion widget directly to that page. So these are some examples. And now, here is an example along the top of our toolbar. When, when an organization adopts OER Glue, we'll integrate with their system. So if they have a specific chat or discussion or any other tools, we can provide, it, provide instant one-click access to that across whatever content they decide to use. And again, I'll demonstrate this in more detail. So out of concern for internet, here's a canned demo video that I'm just going to walk you through. So suppose an organization a, a professor that's a, at an organization that's adopted OER, adopted OER Glue. Let's see if I can keep this. Maybe. Hello. Very good. Um, comes to the OER Glue website. I guess I'm going to fire it up. Go away. And. They teach a class on business, and so they say, okay, is there, are there some courses already out there, some OCWs, that I could draw from to support and begin building uh, support for my, for my learners? Um, we also provide the ability to, for you to point us at a, an existing course website and for us to crawl. But in this case, he goes through the course catalog and searches for business, and he'll see a list of OCWs that we've, that we've crawled. And so he says, okay, uh, let me look at that. See if this is this is interesting. Uh, when it, once he does, it'll open it open up that course up again through our proxy and it should display the first page of the course. So here's the course, and what he's going to do is is cop make a copy of it because he wants to be able to adapt it for for his learners. So it opens at the first page of the course and shows an outline of all the different pages in here. You see the toolbar along the bottom that has the different tools we can use for doing mashups. And here's a page on the government's website that's included as part of this course. He decides, well, are there other resources out there that I could use to enhance this? So he searches our database of open resources and goes and finds something on Open University's website. This looks interesting. And he notices over here on the right, these are recommendations, a recommendation system. If you point us at a web page, we can tell you what are related open resources. Now he notices, well, I like this image, but I want to use it in another context. So he drags that image out of the page into the collector, goes back over here to this article, and drags, drags that in. Now when his students come to that in the context of this course, they'll see that that image is embedded directly there. So that's an example of mashup. Um, now he says, well, I want my students to discuss this. So again, using the strategy of integrate with everyone, we have a bunch of widgets that we've integrated with using JavaScript and HTML. He drags a discuss widget in there. Now his students can have a discussion about this article specific to his class. Again, we're using the content where it is. We're using the tools that are out there. Well, here's a page he knows about, an article by a, a businessman. He says, well, I want to include this in my course. So he goes to the web page, opens his outline, decides where he wants to put it, and drops that article right into that, into his outline. Now, when his students navigate that, they'll, they'll have that. And he, want, he remembers a, a presentation over here on SlideShare. So he goes there, opens up our resource, resource collector, and he sees a new button by it. Collect this. He collects that presentation into the collector. Now he's going to go back. Well, he, first of all, he goes to YouTube. There's, another, there's a video presentation by McClure there. Again, he can collect that video. So he's going around the web, getting these assets that he could use to enhance these other web pages. Collects that. Now he goes back to this article and drops the video drops the presentation directly into this page. It provides additional background for this article. Now he's, what's, what he's going to be doing is, is, well, how do I know what my students are learning? And I want them to engage with this more than just peruse this. We've heard some of the comments from the OLI. Well, he goes to Google Forms and creates a short quiz. We integrate with all the different Google Documents types. He's created this quiz, and now he drops that quiz directly into this to this web page. So when students come, they read the article, they go through the presentation, they see the video, and they respond to, they have some quiz questions here where, you know, all the, if you've used Google Forms, it's a powerful way to build some forms where you can gather some data into your Google accounts. And so here, he's able to do that. And over here on the right, what he's doing now is using our eraser tool. If there's parts that he notices part of this page, well, that's irrelevant to my students or distracting. 
he deletes it out of the page and it's gone. So this is all this process of creating a mashup for the page, which he now publishes out to his institution's website. The students find that site or access that. Uh, they can go. They can see the outline. They can navigate through the, those different pages, and then when they uh, they can interact with the students, with the other students through synchronous tools that we've integrated with uh, to do chat, to do whiteboard, to do those other kind of discussions. And so this again walks you through this whole process of discovering relevant resources, assembling them, deploying them to the learner. Uh, and then now, last, well, let's track this. What are the students doing across all this content? Because we run via proxy or this extension, we're there wherever the student goes across the internet on this course. And so the, the instructor can access these dashboards showing what, how much time the student is spending, see how they're trending, and then drill down into that student's work to see what exactly it is they're doing. So we can identify different types of pages, whether this is assessment or practice or so on, and be able to provide that, uh, as well as an activity feed showing exactly which pages they're visiting and drill down that. And so for a given organization, we can provide this content or this type of analytics alongside the grading to help someone who's trying to do a mentoring uh, to, to provide uh, specific uh, support, learning support. So that's an example of this mashup. Now, uh, of this of a scenario like this, we are uh, so great. Another tool, <laughs> right? Another tool. Well, we aim to be pretty much invisible. So we're building add-ons for the comp for instructor. We their Canvas platform also for Blackboard, so that from within your LMS is already. I think. They were queuing us up here in this last presentation. So we need an easy way to find learning resources from inside of an LMS. We're doing that. And not only are we doing that, we're providing a way to adapt and enhance those resources once you find them. So it would be super easy to search at the, on the scope of resources that you've defined, to find relevant resources, then to mash them up and publish them directly back into your LMS. And, and then we're looking at other integrations too, such as uh, integrating with the gradebooks. So one of the things that OLI does is they embed assessments in the content. Well, using our tools, you'll be able to take Quizlets and embed them in any web page around the web and have that data feed back into your gradebook in your learning management system. So you increase engagement with that content, increase the feedback loop to the, to the learners, to the students, to the content providers. Um, we've we're working with Red Rover, which provides a, a social network platform for, for learning for universities to increase student engagement. We're, be, that, the reason that's important for us is because we're building a, a, a more scalable search and recommendation system that can aggregate content from lots of kind of sources. Uh, Spiros is an instructional development uh, group that helps build content out. Because oftentimes, when you go find an open courseware and well, is it enough to actually be able to use in teaching? Well, oftentimes it needs some, some additional help. So it's important for us to be able to partner with organizations that can provide that additional content development services uh, to be able to help people get to where they need to be in leveraging uh, the open content. So this is that Mar Marsh University, uh, Red Rover, that we provide the back end for, uh, for Red Rover. Um, so now we always get a few questions. Well, what happens if the content changes or goes away, right? So one of the strengths is we let you use content where it is. And that, one of the reasons that's a strength is that if it gets updated or changed, you've always got the most recent, right? So if you spend all this time and, and, and copy content into an LMS and, and then all of a sudden the, things, the content updates, well, now you've got this synchronization problem, right? Well, we've got the opposite. Right? <laughs> it's always current, but what if it goes away? Well, what if it? So the, the strategy that we've taken to that is to snapshot the content. So as a, an author, you can say, I want to use this version. That's one thing we do. Then the other thing we do is detect changes. So if you want to be notified uh, you know, of that, then we can notify you. And, and thirdly, 
if the content's no longer available, we can serve the cached version at least for a, a short amount of time. Or in the case of open content, open license content, uh, provide that snapshot version indefinitely. So again, we're reducing the barriers to adopting open content. Um, so then the next question we always get is, well, it looks like your tools let you use any content anywhere, and it, they do. Um, but what? If, so how do you address this copyright issue from a liability point of view? So I'm, in a, I'm a university; I can get sued for lots of money. How do I? How do I make sure that I don't? And so the the approach that we do that is we have tools. With, fortunately, Creative Commons has established a, a standard for embedding metadata in your resources so that we can detect that, right? And so as an organization that adopts OER Glue, you can choose to enforce a policy, for example, that only allows use of open license content. If you choose to allow it, the thing we can do is op provide audit trails. So as an ad admin or a teacher or whatever, you can say, well, what's in here that's not open license? And then choose to do something about it. So that's that's our approach. <coughs> that. um, and we are exploring, actually, though, that because we because the way OER Glue works is the content loads live off the web. Uh, you know, we, we we're interested to see about you know we're not copying the data in most places. We're using it in place, but we are letting you as the teacher or student choose how you're going to experience it. Right? Your web browser presents it one way. Well, maybe I want it a little different way. I want it with a quiz here. I want it. I don't want that content. So you know. That the issues surrounding copyright and fair use are, are interesting there, at least to us. And if you have opinions or ideas in that space, we're certainly interested. Um, but like I say, we provide for organizations the ability to enforce a policy that can protect them from, from liability. Um, this is my contact information. We are uh, we're hackers, and we're... Uh, we're going to do a hack night. We've got a room 614 tomorrow night at whatever you've done. Come on up. <laughs> if, you want to, if you want to play with code, uh, we'd love to uh, open up the room. We've got junk food if you want to bring beverages or whatever. Come on up. So, 614. All right. Um, that's, um, that's what I have to say. Um, we feel like. Certainly, open content has changed, changed everything, and, it, and it's, it's changing everything. There's a revolution in learning that open content allows, and we want to facilitate that. Um, there's lots of opportunities, so um, that's my spiel. <laughs> So I think the question that you're asking is, is relates to, um, do you have diagnostic assessments aligned with content, which is kind of, I think, where we're all trying to head, right? So we want to align the learning objectives with the learning activities with the assessments, and then use those assessments to, to channel the learner to the resources that will help them bridge the gap from what, what they don't know. So again, we, we don't have that. Uh, we, there's a, we, uh, I guess one thing I should mention is uh, Laura, Laura Hunter is right here from the Utah Education Network. Um, we, uh, they, we recently signed a contract with UEM and we're working with them to deploy this for all of K-12 in, in Utah. And one of the things that UEM is, has is a, is a testing system, right? That has test items aligned with all their state standards. And so the goal with us there will be to allow teachers to integrate, again, assessments aligned with the content directly. In but of course, Carnegie Mellon's OLI, again, is, is really, this is, their, this is their, their, what they do, right? Is, is assessments aligned with the content, feeding back into helping the learners focus where they need to and helping the teachers direct them, direct them there. And so this, this is a big, a big issue. And again, like I mentioned with our 
with our analytics. Um, that's some of the things we're going to doing too, right? So you need you need this map that maps those objectives to the activities to the assessments. Once you've got that, then of course you can do lots of things with it. What, what about replacement, though? Uh, replacement. Like, like for ACT, okay. you know, are, are there is there anything coming up now that could replace ACT or SAT? I'd have to defer to someone else, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Oh, one minute. <laughs> so, the mm -hmm. other burning question. Hey, did you bump up against any security roadblocks in just tracking their data? Because that's one of the things that usually is likely like ahead. Yeah. So, do we run up against security roadblocks? So, when when an organization adopts OER, well, one of the big issues we always address, have to address is single sign-on and authentication, establishing identity. And as far as the security of, of protecting the data, what we attempt to do, as I mentioned before, is integrate with everyone. Right? So we don't pull the gradebook. We use the LMS's gradebook. So again, as much as possible, everywhere, we try and let the tools that are already out there that do their jobs well continue to do them and integrate in ways that, that make sense and, and increase the, the power of, of them combined. Any more questions? Um, is any of this stuff open source software? Is any of it open source? Um, I'll let Justin speak to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we have a, a full, all the platform, it's all written in Ruby on Rails. The whole platform that we use is open source, um, and we continue to contribute that back to the community. A lot of the uh, code that you see that does the mashups is GPL3. Um, the proxy is not currently open source because I'm still writing. <laughs> How do you get money? How do we get money? So we have a community website where we're trying to grow the amount of open content out or that is out there that people can use. And anyone can go there, sign up, use it individually. Then as an organization, that's where we make our money. Through organizations that adopt OER, they have their own website where they control access, they control the content, they get to see the analytics. We integrate with their systems and tools so that it can become basically part of their CIS ecosystem. So, all right. Thank you very much.